blessed, most merciful Heavenly Father. Lord, I come before you humbly, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for making me a last day's watchman, for giving me dreams and visions, and for giving me a work to do, for giving me a work to do in these last days. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray. I pray, Lord, to always be pleasing to you, Lord, in all things, in all things. And I give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Now I know with this video that I'll be talking a lot about me here, but but my focus here is on God and how God moved in my life even before, even before I was born and after I was born. And I give Jesus all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. And now this is not about me, but about how God moved in my life to bring me to repentance, to put my feet upon his path, and to be his last day's watchman with dreams and visions, and to worship God with every fiber of my being and every ounce of my strength, with every step that I take, with every breath that I take, breathe in, and with every word that I utter, may it all be pleasing to God, the living God of Israel. And now, I may not be able to walk, not very much, but I don't care. I did not dwell on it. Maybe it is God keeping me humble, or maybe it is my punishment for telling the one true living God, the one who spoke the whole universe into existence with words. I told that God, no thank you, when he called me to be a watchman and to speak. And I am ashamed that I did that. And I thought, and I thought God almost killed me for telling him no. You cannot argue with God and win. And God won our argument. So I stood up before my church and with tears streaming down my face, I told them everything that was coming just like the Holy Spirit showed me. Now they were shocked. Most didn't believe me. They thought, how can a loving, kind God hurt so many people and destroy America, a nation where there is a church on almost every street corner in every city in America? But I held nothing back. I spoke as I was commanded to speak. When I finished, mouths were open, and you could hear a pin drop in that church. Now, how this all started my story of how God worked in my life. Now my dad was born May 2nd and my mother was born July 30th, 1928. And they were married on May 15th, 1943, making my mother 15 years old when she married my dad. She lied about her age so she could get married as her situation at home was unbearable. Their first home was a converted chicken coop that was converted into a, a house, a rental house, and it had a dirt floor. But they were happy. They were poor, and they picked and chopped cotton to make a living. Most people today have no concept about picking cotton by hand. I did it with my parents when I was a child, about seven or eight years old, and they uh, and they had, they had to drag a fifty to uh, a forty to fifty pound sack of cotton up and down the rows of cotton uh, while you picked it off the stock. It was backbreaking work from sun up to sundown in the hot Arkansas sun. And to make matters worse, the, the cotton bowls, when they opened up, exposing the cotton, they had sharp pointy spines that would poke the back of your fingers until they bled. And it, it was kind of like like that. And uh, and you would do this. You would do this all day. And at the end of the end of the day, they tallied up how much you picked for the day by weight, and you were paid cash. And usually about five to seven dollars a day, bent over, dragging a heavy cotton sack up and down rows of cotton, while picking cotton in the hot sun with your fingers bleeding for five dollars a day. I don't know how many Americans would do something like that today. I bet no one would. In uh, in my books that I've written. I have some old photos of this and uh, in there I remind my children and my grandchildren to remember those who went before them and the sacrifices they made for me and for them. 
in about 1945 to early 1949, my mother came down with tuberculosis, also called TB. Back then, there, uh, there were no drugs for TB, and since it was uh, highly contagious, they would uh, intern people and do a TB sanatorium or hospital in isolation and run some tests and do some archaic measures to try to help, such as collapsing a lung and the like, which, which my mother had that done to her. The only treatment in those days was isolation and fresh, fresh air. So in Arkansas, they built a, a TB sanatorium in Boonville, Arkansas. The building my mother was in was called the Nyberg Building, and she was on the top floor. Back in those days, there, were, there was no air conditioning, no phones in the rooms, no TV, no radios, no fans, unless you bought your own. The TB Sanatorium is still there today, and it is still the tallest building in Boonville, Arkansas. My mother spent two and a half years locked in, in one room, not being allowed to leave except for treatment or surgery. I believe that is where my mother gave her heart to the Lord, as there was nothing else that could save her. She had faith, and she prayed. Toward the end of her stay in late 1948, they started releasing her for a weekend passes. And it was one of these weekend passes that her and my dad stayed at a motel in Boonville, Arkansas. And that was how I came about. Now when her doctors discovered that she was pregnant with me, they demanded that she have an immediate abortion to save her life. They told her that no way, no way could she carry the baby me to full term and deliver a live baby and for her to survive as well. She told the doctors that God gave her this baby and if God willed her to have the baby she would, but if God willed her to, to, to uh, lose the baby or that she lose her life giving birth to her, her baby, me, it would, be, it would be God's will and not theirs, not theirs. So right there my mother dedicated me to God even before I was born. Thank you, Mother. And ever since then, I have had a special connection or bond with my mother that she did not have with my other two, uh, my other two brothers. But I, I never really saw this growing up, and only after she passed away of cancer in 1994, on July 7th, I might add, I, uh, I had family members tell me that it was obvious to everyone that I had a special relationship with my mother. Uh, now my mother and I, we would go for, for walks when she was still alive and she would tell me about things to come that she would uh, she would not live to see, but she told me that, that I would live to see these things in my lifetime. How the country would change, how Christians would be persecuted, how society would change, everything would change and everything would get much worse, much, much worse. How the prices of everything would go out of sight, how food would become scarce and the price of food would go astronomical, and then it would disappear. How the nation would seem to go mad and, and people would go mad and everything would turn upside down. Even the weather and the seasons would be confounded. Nothing would make sense any longer. There would be major signs in Israel major signs in the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, and how many nations would go mad, how many would die, how war was coming, riots, murders, burning, looting, much horror was to come. She told me the economy would collapse and even gold and silver would become worthless. The economy of the whole world would collapse, how earthquakes, tidal waves, volcanoes, all manner of destruction was coming. And America would go dark, cold, and silent. Now I listened, but I did not really believe her. I thought, no, this is America. Those kind of things, those kind of things, just can't happen in America. And but I did not argue with her. I just listened to her. My mother, she never really tried to push God on me, but she led me to God by her example, by her faithfulness, her testimony, her life, and her suffering at the end. She never discussed these things with my other two brothers, just me. I wonder why. 
I think she knew I had a calling in God's time. He would call on me for repentance and a special work for the Lord to warn the people, to tell them about my dreams and visions and the destruction of America. Are you not afraid? You should be very afraid if you are not born again and washed in the blood of Jesus. Marie Lamb, my mother, passed away quietly in her home on July 7th, 1994. Did you notice all the sevens? It's not a church. It's not a religion. It's not a pastor or a faith. No teacher, no prophet or watchman, not even me, can save you from what's coming. Only Jesus can save you, me, or anyone from what is to come. And that would be horror beyond belief, beyond description, beyond comprehension. That is what is coming. Look at the news. You can see that it is coming. Do you think that it will stop at any certain point? Or will it just keep going to its conclusion? My mother never told me that she had any dreams or visions, but I do know that she prayed a lot and she read her King James Bible every single day. I have always had a special relationship with the Holy Spirit. He would come to me and give me things to write down. The Holy Spirit protected me even before I gave my heart to Jesus as he knew I had a work to do for the Lord. I do not do this for my glory. I am only the dust of the earth, and no one is beneath me. And the only thing that's special about me is that I am forgiven, but I am God's dirt. I do this to glorify the one who sent me, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Hamashiach, who is worthy of all praise, all glory, glory and all honor forever and ever. And I offer myself up as a living sacrifice daily to Jesus, as only he is worthy. One of the last things that my mother told me before she passed away was, always remember God. And that is my advice to you in these last days. Always remember God. No matter, no matter what comes, place your full faith and trust in God, as his promises are true. Pray, repent, fast, sackcloth, ashes, whatever it takes to make heaven your home, as it will be so worth it in the end. No, no, God did not save my mother's life. He saved her soul. And one day, one day, soon I will see my mother again on those streets of gold. And she will be young and in a glorified body, just as I will be. And we will see you there on that day. If you are not saved, I beg you, before it's too late, to repent of your sin. Pray the blood of Jesus covers you and washes away all your sin. And believe that Jesus is the Son of God, who was crucified, shed his precious blood, and died on an old wooden cross, was buried, and on the third day he arose from the grave, and he walked this earth again. And pray that Jesus enter into your heart and give you a new heart, and be with you, protect you, and lead you and guide you, lead, lead you and guide at your steps for your last days upon this earth. And you need to say these words, not just mouth them or, or say them in your mind. Our time is short. Now, not tomorrow, is the time to seek Jesus. Knock and it will be opened unto you. Seek and ye shall find. And always remember God. God bless you and yours mightily. We keep you and your family in our prayers with much love and more grace from above. Amen. Our time is short. Our time is short. But we need to we need to have faith. We need to have faith in God. Like like America has never had faith in God. We need to start having faith in God and trust in God. Because He will not let us down. And no, no, God may not save your life, but He will save your soul. And then we will see you on the streets of gold one day soon. And we pray that we see you there. God bless you. God keep you. Everyone. Because every one of you have been a, an absolute blessing to us in this ministry. And this is a last day's ministry. And, and this is a last day's warning. And I was called. I was called for this time such as this. So I am doing what God, God called me to do. And that is to warn the people. So that's what I am doing. God bless you. God bless you and God keep you in your safe, in his loving arms, just like he held me. 
just like you. 